Recently, I had a conversation with Muslims where I learned that if I want to refute Islamic theology and Islam's idea of Allah, then I should demonstrate logically that Islam's teachings are indeed false. Because of that, I have decided to sit down and to do exactly that with this video, and to demonstrate with a purely philosophical approach that Islam is false. This may also be applicable to other religious beliefs and doctrines, Take it as you wish. Here is why Islam is most definitely false. Islam teaches that Allah is almighty, all-knowing, and the one who creates and decrees everything. Islam claims that Allah gave humans the free will and responsibility to choose between belief and disbelief, and that Allah rewards and punishes humans for their belief or disbelief. For Islam to be true, Allah must have created and decreed everything, and humans must be free to choose between belief and disbelief. If Allah did not decree everything, or if free will does not exist, then Islam is false. If Allah did create and decree everything, then humans cannot have free will, and cannot be held accountable for belief and disbelief. If humans have free will and can choose between belief and disbelief, then Allah cannot have decreed everything. It is impossible for both claims to be true at the same time. Therefore, Islam is false. This is a very clear demonstration, a very clear line of reasoning, which concludes that core Islamic teachings contradict with each other, and that Islam is internally, inherently incoherent. The responses to this paradox are, one, that Allah has decreed everything, but he gave you the option to choose between two paths. But if Allah did decree everything, and also decreed that you should have a final choice to make, then that means our final choice is outside of Allah's decree, which means Allah did not decree everything. That means again that Islam cannot be true. Moreover, the Quran clearly says that Allah decides who believes and who disbelieves on several occasions. The second response would be, Allah has decreed the truth, and humans are responsible for falsehood and evil. This again implies that Allah did not create and decree everything, and much of what exists and happens, exists and happens outside of his creation and decree, which contradicts Islam's core claims, that Allah created and decreed everything from beginning to end before he even created it. A third response would be, that Allah created us and knew what we would choose, because he is all-knowing. Which is why he decreed our final choices and decided our punishment or reward in advance. This is the only objection that remotely seems to make sense to me, but the problem is that it only appears to make sense, but contradicts with the premises again. If Allah created humans, created everything, and decreed everything that will happen, then Allah also created the humans and their capabilities in such a way that they would eventually make the wrong choice. And he also decreed that they would eventually make the wrong choice. If Allah is the one who creates and decrees everything, then he could have simply created a human who chooses to believe in him, and could have decreed belief for this human. Instead, Allah created a disbelieving human, and decreed disbelief and hellfire for him, which is the result of Allah's own doing. In fact, a subscriber named Ivan Sensei 88 made a comment that inspired me to make this comparison to creating a robot with free will. If I create a robot with free will, and I know exactly every single action that this robot will take, then the robot doesn't really have free will as I already foresaw all the actions it will take, and this robot is operating under the illusion of a free will and a free choice. To add to that, if I create a robot and I know exactly every single action the robot will take, and create it nevertheless, then I will have essentially approved my own plan to create this sentient robot while knowing that this robot would make the wrong choice, and that I would therefore punish this robot with eternal torture. But if I want to create these robots just so they serve me and worship me, but I know that this particular robot will not do that and will burn forever, then why exactly am I doing that? Moreover, I must have built this robot with its capabilities shaped in such a way that it will eventually fail the test and make the wrong choice. And I even went ahead and programmed the robot's path and lifetime and decreed that it will fail, because I decree everything. What exactly am I punishing in this case? Am I really punishing my own creation for its own faults? Or am I punishing my creation for the faults that I have created? To make it very simple one more time, Allah decrees everything. Allah creates choice A and B. Allah gives the human the option to choose between choice A and B. 
the human chooses B. Since Allah decrees everything, Allah must have also decreed that the human would choose B. Therefore, Allah is responsible for the human's choice. The human does not have free will. This is the purely logical aspect. Of course, there is also the moral aspect to this story, or the logical and moral aspect to this story. Allah is fundamentally known as the all-knowing, almighty, and good, or the most just, the most forgiving, and the most merciful. If Allah creates humans, the test, heaven and hell, and puts the believers into heaven and the disbelievers into hell, then it is inevitable that myriads of those humans that Allah has created are bound to go to hell while others go to heaven, simply over the matter of belief and disbelief. Since he is all-knowing and almighty, he must know this and he can easily prevent this. Since he does not change this, and he does not prevent this, and he knowingly creates myriads of humans that will go to hell, that will suffer eternally simply for not acknowledging him, then Allah can hardly be described as good, the most merciful, most just, most forgiving. Now justice may be hard to define, and Islam may have its own definition of what justice is. That's the entire problem with the assertion that Allah is the most just. I'm also the most just, in my own sense. But what we understand by merciful and forgiving is not too hard to define. Even Islam teaches that if others harm you and hurt you, then it is better to forgive them, although it is not a command. Because all humans make mistakes, only Allah is perfect. And we should forgive each other, we should look past each other's wrongdoings. Unless, of course, people leave Islam or engage in homosexual activity or adultery or they spread their different religions or they criticize Islam or they reject Islam while believing in other gods. Forgiving people for their mistakes is considered merciful and forgiving. But Allah, who is supposed to be the most forgiving and the most merciful and who is sublime to everybody, the ultimate good, does not forgive humans simply because they do not believe in him, because they make a mistake and they are not convinced by him. And he vengefully punishes them and tortures them forever. But he is the most merciful and the most forgiving. It rather looks like most merciful and most forgiving don't really mean anything in Islam because those words are also arbitrarily defined. So when we talk about how Allah is the most forgiving and most merciful, that doesn't really mean anything. And good also doesn't mean anything in this case. It is also, again, completely arbitrarily defined. No matter what our moral stances are, we all know that a normally functioning human has a bad reaction to pain and harm and a good reaction to benefit and pleasure. This is why our moral systems are in one way or another based on preventing harm and pain and aiming for benefit and pleasure. All of us would feel great pain and suffering if we were being tortured forever. We would all hate it. It would be the opposite of an ideal state of existence. If Allah knows us better than we know ourselves, yet he created a reality in which suffering exists and in which numerous beings will be condemned to eternal suffering, then this means it is he who has essentially created suffering, created pain, created hate, created evil, created the most undesirable, the least ideal state. And he chose this to be a reality for many of his poor, flawed creatures. Just because. This is by no reasonable definition the most merciful, the most forgiving, the best. This cannot be the most perfect thing. All of these reasons and arguments render Islam's logic false. Therefore, Islam is false. But of course, this is not even something that I argue on. I have already demonstrated many times, based on Islamic scripture itself and beliefs itself, that Islam is false. We should all know by now that Islam is false. Stay away from Islam. Mm -hmm.